I will be discussing the rules I had to follow prior and during... I keep hitting it. In this video, I will be discussing the rules I had to follow prior and during my research trip in Antarctica. The first big rule is that prior to your expedition, you need the approval of a medical practitioner that you're fit enough and healthy enough to go down to the Antarctic. Each vessel has its own medical facilities, but they are very small and the doctors are there to treat milder conditions. For example, if you get a flu or you might get seasick. So the company needs to ensure that your health conditions won't pose a big challenge to you while you're in a place where there's no hospitals. That doesn't mean that only very fit and healthy people get to go. There are a lot of senior people on the trip with us and a lot of them had different medical conditions and I think as long as it's not something too serious you're still going to get the approval to go. However getting the approval at least in the UK was really difficult even for me. A lot of doctors in the NHS did not want to give me this approval in case something might happen to me and then somehow they would end up being liable. I thought that was pretty strange and I ended up paying a private practitioner to consult me and to give me this approval. Another option is to use the service provided by the tourism company. They generally have their own doctors doing these kinds of screenings and you can do them online, but they're extremely expensive, even more expensive than what I had to pay privately. Another more informal rule prior to your voyage is that you should avoid getting sick. If during the first day of your expedition, you show up and you're visibly sick and you're coughing, they can literally deny you access on the ship. That's to ensure that you're not posing a threat to the other passengers because you're going somewhere together for the next three weeks and you're all gonna share the same space. So now let's get onto the rules that I had to follow during my research trip. The rules and guidelines for traveling down to the Antarctic are all set up by an organization called IATO. The purpose of these frameworks is to ensure that people are visiting Antarctica safely. I think we all know that Antarctica is a extremely important globally. So it is fundamental to be very careful when we visit it to ensure that it stays pristine. When you go down to the Antarctic, you are basically agreeing to respect all the rules set out by IATO. The company that you travel with expects you to be familiar with the manual developed by IATO prior to your voyage. You can also do an online test and get a certificate from IATO. And even when you arrive on the ship, there's going to be a few mandatory lectures on the guidelines and rules that you have to follow. So that's one of the first mandatory things that you have to do once you step on the ship is go to these lectures and then clean your entire equipment. There's a whole day on the vessel that is dedicated just to this. And this happens while you're on the Drake Passage on your way to Antarctica. The company will provide you with really strong vacuums and a time slot to go down to a booth to start cleaning your equipment. You have to ensure that you get rid of any dirt or seeds. So you vacuum your bags, your camera gear, you vacuum your clothing and so on. This they don't enforce this if your items are new or if you wash them and haven't worn them since. Next, the company will provide you with rubber boots for your entire expedition. These rubber boots have to be disinfected every time before you step onto the continent and when you're coming back. So as your group is getting ready to go into the zodiacs in order to go to the continent, you are going to pass through these pools of disinfectant and you're supposed to step in it and make sure that your boots are really clean. And when you return from your visit, you are obligated to go through these machines that have these really fast brushes that clean your boots and then you have to step through the pool of disinfectant once more. I say pool but it's more like a tray. Furthermore, the company provides you with your outer jacket and the life vest for every visit that you do on the continent and every time you go into the zodiac. And you need to ensure that you're wearing those as well as your boots every time you go on a visit. What's more, the company divides you into groups and gives you time slots for when you are going to go on the continent. If you have other commitments, like if you're giving a lecture, you can change your time slot and join another group. But for most of the trip, you need to respect those times and always be ready with all your equipment on before your time slot comes. And that's also because the schedule can change just like that when you're on the trip. You're at the mercy of weather conditions and sometimes if things run very smoothly, you might need to go even before your time slot. And that's just the reality of visiting Antarctica. You need to be prepared and you need to be very adaptable to these changes. So now let's talk about the rules that you have to follow when you're on the continent. 
You are not allowed to crouch, you are not allowed to sit, you are not allowed to place anything on the ground. And if it happens that you drop something on the ground, like a glove, you need to pick it up right away. Apart from touching the ground with the soles of your feet, you are not allowed to touch anything else. You are not allowed to pick up rocks, you are not allowed to take back anything with you. And this is all in order to prevent cross-contamination. Antarctica is a very fragile environment, and this is all to make sure that it does not get disrupted by invasive species species or other kinds of threats. What's more, when you walk onto the continent, you are obligated to follow the path that the company set out for you. So the expedition crew will go on the continent before everybody else, and they place orange cones to depict the pathway that everybody has to respect. Then there are always expedition crew members that are overseeing the people who are visiting the continent, and they make sure that the people stick to the path and let them know if they are breaching any of the rules. There's also a rule that you need to clear the path if you're seeing a penguin or a different animal trying to pass. It was quite funny to see how little penguins actually care about humans. Even when you stick to the designated path, some penguins might still want to cross it and get really close to you, and some just try to walk right up to you. Although this feels awesome, you still need to ensure that for their safety, you back away and you clear the path so they can easily pass. Still, there are animals that might get bothered by human presence. For example, if there are birds that have recently had chicks, they might start getting really protective over the chick, and you can see it in their behavior, and in those situations, you always have to back off. The rules can be flexible for the researchers going on the trip. For example, there were scientists on the trip that were studying the microplastics in the snow, and they had to crouch and they had to collect samples of the snow and the sediments on the ground. Or there were other scientists that were tracking the snow algae in Antarctica. They had to bring their own drone, which had to be placed on the ground before it got flown in order to scan the area. Or in my case, I had to take a lot of 360 footage, so I brought a tripod that I placed on the ground to take footage with my omnidirectional camera. I also took recordings of penguin sounds, so I was allowed to get closer to the animals. For the researchers that engage with these activities, they have to wear a bright yellow vest, and this signals to the other passengers that they shouldn't follow these people because they're just doing scientific research. And myself and all of the other scientists always had to disinfect all our equipment between each visit. So although we get more flexibility to do our research, it's not like we can just roam free and do whatever we want. The animals and the environment really deserve of our respect. I will admit that I do have some complicated feelings about tourism in Antarctica. I think it's really great that having touristic vessels that go there enables scientists as well to go and do their work. However, when you have hundreds and thousands of people that go there, even by accident, rules will be breached. For example, the wind is insanely strong, so some items might end up being swept away and unretrievable. And that happened to people on the trip, and I thought it was extremely sad. Plus, there's all the fuel that you can consume in order to get there. And what's more, I was privileged to go with a company that really cares about the rules, and they educate their passengers on so many important aspects like climate change, or they taught us about actions that we can take to protect Antarctica. However, there are other companies that don't really care as much. So I'm curious to know what you think about these rules. Do you think there should be more rules? What do you think about tourism in Antarctica? I'm Maria, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.